Good morning and welcome to the live stream of the United Methodist Church of Preston Hollow from right here in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, we just don't ever know what we should do every day. Do we light a fire? Do we turn on the air conditioner? Do we go float in the pool? Or do we get our parkas out? It's been an uh, interesting spring, but we're hoping that spring has sprung and uh, we're ready for our uh, spring and summer. Thanks again for tuning in today. We're glad that you are part uh, of this live stream. We don't believe it's an accident that you have tuned in today. Whatever buttons you clicked or however you found this, um, I want you to know that you are gonna be encouraged through the, the music, through the worship, and uh, the songs that you're gonna hear. And uh, we want you to know that uh, you are valuable to us and that we love you and we believe that God loves you with no exceptions. No matter where you are in life, uh, that He cares about you deeply. And so thank you for, for tuning in today. A couple things before we start the service today. I wanted to let you know I had uh, I was part of a special event over this weekend, and I got to see Rex Carter. If you remember, uh, nearly two years ago, uh, his grandmother and sister uh, were killed in a car accident, and he was nearly killed. He was in intensive care uh, for over three months, and uh, so I took this picture with him. Uh, on Saturday and I just want to report to you Preston Hollow that he is doing well we, we want to say thank you for your prayers but not only for your prayers but for your support uh, they had major medical bills and Preston Hollow sent several thousand dollars to show their love and support for the Carter family and uh, I know uh, that his dad Craig is planning on filming a little video to let you all know how grateful he is so again we just want to say thank you for those of you that give every week you are making a difference in people's lives. Uh, real quickly before we get going, don't forget next Sunday, are, are you ready for this? Our new roof is done and uh, COVID is getting quiet. Thank the Lord. Wood. And so we are returning to in-person worship. Our, uh, our senior pastor, Dr. Tom Wachies, with our music uh, director, Russ Rieger, and our musicians and choir and our church, our staff, we are so excited to be in person again. We cannot wait to see you. So we have something special. Next Sunday, uh, we're gonna be having a special breakfast at 9.30. From 9.30 to 10.15, join us in our fellowship hall for breakfast. Uh, pastor Hadley Edwards from New Orleans is gonna be there and have a short Bible study just to encourage you. And then at 1030, it's going to be like Easter a month early. So we have a great, great service planned. And even for those of you here online, we're pulling out all the stops and we cannot wait uh, for um, you to experience next week's uh, worship service. And so then the next week, we're going to be having a different kind of live stream and a different kind of service. Um, and so on that day, we are going to be doing a forum. We're going to talk about the pain and the struggles of this pandemic and what we went through and the isolation and not being together and not worshiping together and so we're going to be having a discussion and uh, we hope that it brings hope and and uh, encouragement to you and then don't forget of course if you are in the dallas area uh and uh on uh april the 10th um we have a special cantata that our choir is going to be doing virtually and live in person so a lot going on leading up to easter of course april the 17th we have a great easter extravaganza then the weekend after easter we're doing an outdoor tent service like a big gospel service outside so we have a lot happening over the next four to five weeks so if you are in dallas do join us. We would love to have you. Well, that's enough. I've talked a long time. It is time to worship and uh, praise our God together from your home. Let's worship our King together. I'll walk with God from this day on. There is no 
morning. We're certainly glad that you're joining us this morning. Now, you may hear a few bangs and uh, hammer uh, strikes because we're getting our roof done at the church right now, but let us begin with a word of prayer. Loving God, we thank you for this day and the opportunity to serve you. We thank you for all that you have poured into us, and now, God, we ask that you would pour your Holy Spirit and holy understanding into our lives as we delve deeply into your word. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and everyone would say, Amen. So this morning, I want to uh, speak with you for just a few moments from the idea, just one more thing. And we're going to be talking from the text Genesis 15, verses 1 through 12, and verses 17 through 19. Have you ever had the experience of being in a conversation and having just one more thing to add? Usually what happens to me is the one more thing doesn't occur to me until long after the conversation has ended. I can usually come up with a snappy response or a pretty good retort. It just doesn't come to me until long after the opportunity to present it. There seems to be a lot of fear-mongering going on right now about the future ahead of us. Of course we are concerned with the future. Everyone is. In the future, will our gas prices go to $5 or $6 or even as high as $7 or $8 a gallon? This has implications for the future ahead of us. We'd all like to know these things so that we can prepare for them. How long will this war rage in the Ukraine? How long can they hold out against the more powerful and ominous force of the Russians? These questions about the future may have a direct correlation to how the future will be for us and others. When we find ourselves in conversations concerning the current events and what the future will be, I'm astounded by how often I come away from them thinking of, other questions to propose. And just one more thing I want to ask. The future, our future, is a scary thing to contemplate, wouldn't you say? What will it be like? What can we do to prepare for it? What will be my particular place in that future? These are all questions we would like to ask, and I'm sure there are many others. There are plenty of folks who would like to ask just one more thing. In our text today, we find Abram having a conversation with God about the future. God is laying out for Abram just how that future will look and what it will mean. Abram is a little dubious because he knows the way things unfold in the world he's currently living in. In that world, in order for there to be a future, there has to be someone to carry that future forward. Abram and Sarai have no one to carry their ancestry forward into the future. 
This is part of the conversation being had between Abram and God. Abram is quicker than I am. He thinks right away to ask just one more thing. So let's listen in on this conversation in Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 12, and then verses 17 through 19. Let's listen for the Word of God. After these things, the Word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. And then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all of these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Kenites and the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Raphim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We worry about the future. That's our human nature. But we live and breathe and make decisions based in our present. Catherine Milkman is a behavioral economist at the Wharton School. And she's very interested in how daily decisions are affected by whether the current self or the future self is making the choices. Now this is not to say that any of us can hop into a time machine and jump into the future, but we can decide to make choices with a focus on the current day or a future day. Milkman has explored how people buy groceries online. Specifically, she has looked at what people order when they buy for next day delivery compared with what they order for delivery three days in advance. The current self buys for next day delivery. The future self buys for three days in the future. And what has she found? People spend much more money when they buy for immediate consumption and they tend to purchase less nutritious food. If you buy for rush, says Milkman to Psychology Today, you buy junk. Yes, it's true, your current self buys Twinkies and potato chips. I mean, after all, they taste great right now. Your future self, on the other hand, buys whole grains and raw vegetables. When you make a plan to eat better in the future, you tend to buy food that will support a nutritious diet. Your future self is much more rational and restrained than your current self. Your future self wants to benefit from a balanced diet while your current self will eat anything that tastes delicious. Your future self wants to have zero credit card debt, but your current self craves a brand new television. Your future self wants to learn a foreign language, while your current self gets bored after 15 minutes of an instruction program. So what can you do? Put your future self in charge. Make a grocery list and stick to it. Pay down your debt each and every month. Spend 30 minutes a day on language study, no exceptions. The more certain the future is, says Psychology Today, the more power it has. So make the future certain. Give it power in your life. Put your future self in charge of your current daily decisions. In conversation, God is trying to assure Abram to allay his fears about the future. God is trying to provide a hope for Abram that will live beyond him. Abram is concerned. God tells him not to be afraid. Now let's put a pin in that right here. How many times in the Bible do we hear those words, do not be afraid? 
Do you know? I looked it up. There are 365 times those words or words like fear not appear in the Bible. Doesn't that sound incredible to you? Imagine for every day of the year there is an admonition for us to not be afraid. God knows our tendency to fear and God continues to pet us and assure us and try to calm our fearful tendencies. We fear because we know the future is not in our control. and We have to relinquish our control and rely on God. Now that's a powerful thought. Relying on God instead of our own feeble attempts at control. But back to Abram. Abram is afraid because he knows how things work. He says to God, just one more thing, God. How can you say the future is great when I am old and I have no heir for the future? As Milkman points out in her conversation with Psychology Today, we make our decisions based on what we think and feel right now. We tend to not make decisions for the future based on what we want for our future self. God is trying to tell Abram to think into the future, begin to live and believe now as if the future were already here. How different would today be if all of us acted out how we want the future to be? Do we want peace in the future? Then we should act out in peaceful ways today. Do we want the future to be better for all? Then we act out in generous ways today. We can't control the future completely. That really is up to God. But we can ready ourselves in order for God to accomplish in the future what we hope for. Abram and Sarai weren't getting any younger. The days were slipping by incredibly fast, and Abram was fearful that the future would not hold a place for him. God assures Abram he will have an heir to carry him into the future. But just one more thing. You have to trust me. Ah, that's the rub, isn't it? Do we trust God with the future? Do we have the ability to say to God, I believe the future will be just as you have said. I believe you will be there in that future, and because you are, the future is filled with hope. Can we say those things? That's hard, isn't it? Somehow we just need a little more than some hope-filled words. We'd like a, a little evidence, a, a little map to show us how we're going to get there. What we do today directly affects what will occur in our future. That's a fact. Notre Dame was built over a period of 182 years from start to finish. No one who started to build was alive to see its completion. They had to trust and believe that they were doing what they were doing would be carried to completion by successive generations. What they were doing would not be in vain, but would contribute to the greater glory. Of course, we all saw how a fire ravaged that magnificent edifice re recently. But as they rebuild, and as they continue to rebuild, it too will be rebuilt for future generations. All that will be put into that building is with an eye toward the future and what will be. And just one more thing. Those working today won't be alive in that future, but their dreams and their aspirations will be. In his conversation with God, Abram is directed to bring certain animals for sacrifice before the Lord. So he does as instructed, and we're told that sleep took hold of Abram, and he descended into a terrifying darkness. Why terrifying? It's terrifying because he didn't know what he would encounter in that darkness, because he couldn't see through the darkness to what lay just beyond. It was in that place that a covenant occurs between God and Abram. Abram experiences the very presence of God and hears just what the future would be. His descendants would be blessed beyond measure. God has a plan and a future for them. Yes, there would be hard times. Yes, the present some of them would experience would be difficult and even frightful. But the future reality would be one which God has already set in place in that future reality, their place in the world is assured. In that future reality, God will be there. In that future reality, a great nation will be born and prosper. Just one more thing, though. For a future reality to come to fruition, isn't it incumbent on the people of today to live into that reality? Isn't it important to begin acting and living as you would want the future to be? You know, I'd love to be thin and svelte today, but I'm not. In order for that to happen, don't I need to start eating and exercising to accomplish what I want my future self to be? 
in a little place we know as the Ukraine, there's a man who lived into his future. Volodymyr Zelensky obtained a law degree from Kiev National Economic University, but then he pursued a career in comedy and production. He starred in a series, Servant of the People, where he played the role of the Ukrainian president, and that series aired from 2015 to 2019. A political outsider, he won the real election for president in 2019 with 73.2% of the vote. He lived into his future and the future of his country. So an actor, a comedian, an outsider, some would have dismissed him as a dilettante. No experience, no political savvy, no political chops. He's proved to be quite a bit more than was expected. He stands with his people in opposition to the Russian incursion. He doesn't shirk his responsibilities when the going got tough. He stands ready to lead his country into the future. Abram couldn't see his future clearly. He couldn't know what God knew. He had to believe what God was telling him and to live into that future that God was promising. How can you and I face the uncertainty of what we are experiencing right now? The future could look very bleak indeed. But just one more thing. God has told us over and over, do not be afraid, fear not. So in contemplating the future, we might need to start living and acting in the ways we want that future to look like. You know the famous hockey player, Wayne Gretzky? He says, most players skate to where the puck is. I skate to where the puck will be. Is that a word for you and me? Should we be skating to where the puck will be? If we want the puck of the future to land in a place with justice and equality for all, shouldn't we be skating there now? If we want a future where war and aggression are a thing of the past, shouldn't we start skating toward peace now? If we want a future where all people can live secure and in harmony with one another, shouldn't we start skating toward that hope now? Fatima Husseini, an Afghan journalist who works for USA Today, describing how the future abruptly moved forward, invading the present on the day that she realized she had to leave her native country immediately. And she says, in the office of Kabul Now, the English language section of the news agency where I work, phones were ringing as the Taliban advanced. My mother called me crying, put on your long dress, the Taliban are everywhere. And I thought she was joking, mom, it's okay, my dress is not that short, but it was. She started shouting, you're not listening to me. A rumor spread that President Ashraf Ghani had left the country. Soon no one could focus. Men who came to work that morning in suits came back later in Paran Tunban. That's the traditional long shirts and loose trousers. The Taliban were in the presidential palace by now, but we didn't know. Early in the afternoon, I decided to go home, but my colleague stopped me and he said, I couldn't leave without a male escort. That's when I knew it was real. I took a car most of the way. The shops bustling just that morning were closed and the streets nearly empty. At Taj Begum, the owner had locked the door and smashed all the hookahs. A truck loaded with Taliban flew by. I, I walked the last few minutes alone. The few men I saw stared at me for a long time. At the apartment, I hugged my mom and she said very slowly, your dress is short. With the help of some friends who referred her to Ukrainian NATO troops, she was able to leave. At great risk, bluffing her way through the desperate crowd outside the airport gate, flying to Kyiv in the Ukrainian military flight, and eventually on to Washington, D.C. Fatima didn't know the future, but she lived into it, trusting that the Ukrainians would keep her safe. When it comes to our future, we too can feel safe as Abram or Fatima because the future lies somewhere beyond us. But God is there beckoning us to come, beckoning us to meet Him in that place prepared for us. We should begin to live into that future unafraid. There are forces beyond us that make that future certain. God makes that future certain. N.T. Wright in his book, Following Jesus, Biblical Reflections on Discipleship, recounts this story. The communist lecturer paused before summing up. His large audience listened fearfully. Therefore, he said, there is no God. Jesus Christ never existed. There is no such thing as a Holy Spirit. The church is an oppressive institution, and anyway, it's out of date. The future belongs to the state, 
and the state is in the hands of the party. He was about to sit down when an old priest near the front stood up. May I say three words, he asked. The lecturer disdainfully gave him permission. So the priest turned and looked out over the crowd and shouted, Christ is risen! And back came the roar of the people. He is risen indeed! They'd been saying it every Easter for a thousand years. Why should they stop now? God has the future in His hands. What is it that you and I need to do? If we believe Christ has risen indeed, then we should start living that way. Abram lived out his life knowing the future was secure and certain. He couldn't imagine what all his progeny would live through. He couldn't imagine the completion of God's promise. He asked just one more thing in his conversation with God, and God told him just how it would be. He assured him of a future. What is our future going to be? I don't know, but I know it will be a future with God, and a future with God is all we really need to know. Oh, and just one more thing. Let's you and I start living our future right now. Let's start being who God calls us to be right now. We are to proclaim God's love, show God's love, and live God's love. And if we start doing that, we have no fear because the future will be bright indeed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tom, and thank you, Russ, and all of our musicians for a, a great, great day. We want to say thank you again. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the broadcast today, that we gave several thousand dollars to Rex Carter, and uh, I, we want to say thank you for each person that gives faithfully each week. If you'd like to give to the United Methodist Church of Preston Hollow, uh, just text to the number 77977, type in the words PHUMC, and we will send you a link. Or you can visit our website at uh, umcprestonhollow.com. And uh, finally, you can send a check in the mail to 6315 Walnut Hill Lane, Dallas, Texas, 75230. Next week, for those of you that live in Dallas, join us for our in-person uh, worship service, 930 breakfast, 1030, and a, a, an incredible service as we come together and worship. In fact, we're going to be doing a special communion service. Since we've not done communion uh, together in several months, we're going to do a special communion service. It's going to be a, a, a really great day. Thanks again for watching, and remember that God loves you with no exceptions. Have a great week.